Good morning and welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Excuse the lack of my banner, but uh, I've not put it up after we went on a day trip to Dar, which I'll tell you on a uh, overnight weekend trip to Dar for Mindspeak. Uh, let me tell you about that. I wrote about it this, this weekend. Mindspeak Caravan Goes to Dar and the January Man, January Macamba. Mindspeak is the monthly event that I organise and whose inspiration was an inscription written as you enter the Mevlana's mausoleum in faraway Konya in Turkey, which said, Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshipper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you're broken your vows a thousand times, come, yet again, come, come. It made a very, very deep impact on me, that inscription. The Mindspeak Caravan of Hope and 21st Century Cooperation and Conversation achieved liftoff in 2011 when the Ugandan President of Museveni graciously accepted to be my guest. That very same weekend, Dr. Kiza Bezije had been airlifted to hospital in Nairobi and we had liftoff, as you can imagine. All the world's media was camped out there. Main speakers hosted Christine Lagarde, President Kagame, Bob Collymore, Joshua Origara, and I like to think it's indigenous and a go-to destination. It's a monster on social media, and in many respects I am prouder of Mindspeak than I am of predicting Euro-dollar parity, it's getting a little bit of a bounce, the parabolic dollar surge going a lot higher, and the collapse in the price of crude oil about to drop below $40 a barrel and crush rebound hopes from Venezuela to Nigeria to Angola. This weekend we took our Mindspeak caravan to Dar es Salaam and this was particularly cool, not only because Tanzania is where my ancestors landed more than 100 years ago when they hopped on a dhow from India and did not take advantage of the reversible escalator component of the monsoon wind and stayed in Africa. But also because Mindspeak was hosting the very 21st century 41-year-old, older than 87% of Tanzanians, presidential candidate January Makamba, who is the Deputy Minister of Communication, Science and Technology. I had met January over Twitter. When we met for the first time, I was received so graciously, and I found the experience otherworldly and to be savoured. Etiquette is a little bit old style now, but fine etiquette is a wonderful thing. Later, when I read January's biography, I learned that he got his etiquette from his grandmother. And I'll just give you a sentence from that. Life in the village happened at my grandma's place. She used to have a little village pub selling local brew, which I learned is called Lubisi. With the background noise about Tanzania's commitment to the EAC, it was particularly sweet that it was the very Pan-African, the East African Makamba, who had taken Mainspeak on the road and regional again. It was a wonderful session carried worldwide on a live stream and trended first in Tanzania and in Kenya. We're not talking about the arrival of the new digital age in East Africa, it's already here. January was a tour de force. There is so much meat on the policy bone, you could feed the 5,000. I asked January, are you a policy wonk? It was a rhetorical question. At one point he told me you can measure your political capital by how long it takes you to walk through a room of CCM party members. As we walked up the back stairs and hired Kilimanjaro, and he was regaled by all the ordinary folks who work in the engine room of a hotel, I understood what he meant. East Africa is real young now, and hopes of our people in Dar, in Nairobi, in Kigali, in Kampala have converged. I realize that January is the lightning rod for the hopes for a better future people carry with them. He said Tanzanians are not looking for an elder statesman politician to lead them. They are looking for a vibrant and honest leader of the new age. I sincerely hope we pushed January closer to the tipping point.
the tipping point is that magic moment when an idea, a trend, or social behavior crosses a threshold, tips, and spreads like wildfire. I'll put up a photograph I took of the night sky in Dar es Salaam, night shot from the eighth floor of the Hyatt. I'll put up a pho photograph of uh, January, um, um, a, a, a photo that Caroline Keir posted which showed us trending in both Nairobi, in Kenya and in Tanzania. Um, he said many things, too many to mention at this point, but one of which was there's no going back on the EAC. We have to frame the argument, he said. I half expected Moli Munyerere to turn up, I must admit. The Hyatt is steeped in a lot of history. So I'll tell you about it over the next two podcasts, but really impressive. So it got me extremely enthusiastic. Macro thoughts, it's all about the dollar. I'll put up a photograph, home thoughts, the beach in Dar es Salaam. We had lunch, uh, lunch before we came back. Um, the National Geographic is saying oceans are losing oxygen and becoming more hostile to life. And they tweeted this photograph, it's fantastic. Finally got my copy of Speed and Politics by Paul Virilio from the inestimable Chang at the Yaya bookstore. I like this photograph of astronauts celebrating PI Day by returning to Earth in golden parachutes. And this, treated by Bella Chemi, La solitude s'est écoutée le vent et le pouvoir le dire à personne. And a lovely photograph as well. Political reflections, none of us, Russia, the United States, the coalition and regional states, wants to see a collapse of the government and political institutions in Damascus. This is the CIA's John Brennan said Washington had reason to worry about who might replace Assad if his government fell, given the rise of the Daesh terror group and other jihadists in Syria. I think that's a legitimate concern, Brennan said, when asked if the US government feared who might succeed Assad. Speaking at event at the Council on Foreign Relations, he said that extremist elements, including Daesh and Al-Qaeda veterans, are ascendant right now in some parts of Syria. The last thing we want to do is to allow them to march into Damascus. My conclusions are it's taken a very long time to reach that conclusion and a lot of dead people. Just History Picks tweeted a photograph of uh, Damascus, Syria, 1940. Let me put that up. And then Scenic Sites tweeted a photograph of Damascus at night on March the 7th. The US has shut down its Saudi embassy amid security fears. Um, cancelled all consular services for Sunday and Monday due to heightened security concerns. DPRK underscore news, who is the official news channel for North Korea, has tweeted a photograph of the Russian President Putin at Pyongyang House of Martial Instruction for a friendly bout with Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un. Um, according to France 7776, state executions have risen to two per day in Iran. Venezuela President Maduro granted power to govern by decree. And uh, clearly it's now full-blown panic stations in Venezuela. But oil below $40, I'm afraid, blows up Nicolas Maduro big time. Put up a photograph of a uh, throwback a photo that was uh, tweeted by Telesur TV, Fidel Castro and Nicolas Maduro. He's ordered hundreds of soldiers to take part in military drills the last weekend. Coming to currency markets, the euro has popped a little bit higher to 105.43 dollar index around the 100 mark Japanese yen, 121.23. Swiss 10062 when I checked last, the pound 147.75. Aussie 0.7641, India rupee 63.018. South Korean won 11.3540, Rial 3.2480, I think that's going to fall. Egyptian pound improved to 7.6069, and the Rand 12.4630, that's really under pressure. Bloomberg has a story how the US dollar made a spectacular turnaround that took everyone by surprise. Not me, I hope you will allow. Saying the biggest story in financial markets is the rise of the dollar. After starting to rally in early 2014, the dollar is now at its highest level since 2003.
periphery. Um, and uh, the rising dollar apparently and other articles of concern and policy makers will be watching it closely. I don't think that they, that they are interested in it at the moment and I think it suits the geopolitical game to hike rates in fact. Bloomberg dollar spot index which tracks the US currency against 10 major peers has climbed more than 20% since, since the middle of last year. <coughs> in real, this is the point, in real inflation adjusted terms the dollar is still well below its level 30 years ago when the US and its allies banded together at the Plaza Hotel in New York in September 1985 to drive down the currency. Removing the qualifier of patience from the Fed's official statement borders on ringing the bell on a rate hike. I think that's what's going to happen this week. Take you back to the 29th of September last year when I said there's a small window for sharks as the dollar rises. Um, January this year I said I think the Fed is just one headline economic print from raising interest rates. And I said a rate hike even as small as a quarter percent would be the catalyst for a renewed surge in the dollar. Dollar index, I'll put up um, a three month chart. My new target is 110 euro dollar. I'll put up a three month chart. My target is now 0.93. Um, as I said on the 12th of Jan, it's headed to parity and even lower. Goldman Sachs now expects the euro to slide to 0.80 by the end of 2017. Nanex LLC tweeted euro versus other currencies. This was from Friday. It's interesting looking at. Gold, last time I checked, 1162.55, but I think it's all set to break down again. Crude oil hanging by its fingernails just above a fresh 2015 low at 44.34 last. I think it's going below 40. I saw this tweet from official Joel F. Massive protest today in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, calling for the impeachment of President Rousseff. I'll put up a one-year chart of the real. I think it's going to fall. Channel 4, Vanuatu President fears the worst from the storm. That's terrible news and we console everybody there. Sub-Saharan Africa, SAIS Africa tweeted, Africa's mobile phone penetration to rise to 79% by 2020. Big surge in smartphones as well. Zambia's President recovering after surgery in South Africa, a very good Zambian friend who says he's an alcoholic. Um, he collapsed and uh, uh, they are spinning it as something, the narrowing of the esophagus, but uh, people who know are saying something totally different. The Quacho retreated the seventh day. Uh, it's down 13% this year. Um, the biggest fall amongst all African, 24 African currencies tracked by Bloomberg. Interesting article in blogs and beyond BRICS talking about companies who are seeking to invest in emerging markets should be on the lookout for those countries that have invested in diversifying their economies. That will often mean having Ethiopia on their list. Ethiopia, 12th fastest growing economy in the world. Hefty state-led investment has kept the economy growing at more than 8% a year for over a decade. More than that, it has become Africa's fastest non-growing non -growing, growing non oil economy. Growing population, 94 million, urbanization, rising income levels, saying it's surfacing as an attractive consumer market. By 2020, Coca-Cola hopes to sell 100 million unit cases in Ethiopia, putting it on par with Egypt and South Africa, but there are lots of challenges there, particularly around FX. Um, I like this photograph, uh, photo by Marcin Sespensky, taken on the 24th of January of the skyline of Addis Ababa. South African oil shares up 4.77% year-to-date, but has corrected 1,048 points since March the 6th, when it closed a record high. MTN reported data usage revenue jumped 33% to account for nearly a fifth of MTN's overall revenue, speaking to the uptake of smartphones on the African continent. Dollar Rand, I'll put up a six-month chart, it's at a 13-year low, down 7% year-to-date. Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, Oman pledge more than $12 billion. Half of them as deposits in the central bank. Egypt has had a great week last week. Overwhelming support, funds coming through direct, foreign direct investment through the private sector, all sorts of people piling in. Egyptian stock market is up 8.99% year to date, 
just below 10,000. Nigerian all shared down 10.61% year to date. Nigerian central bank lacks the resources to protect its currency. The ex chief says, if you didn't save during the years of plenty, when the drought comes, you die, Sanusi said. And that's basically what's happened. We had high oil prices, we did not save. Now prices are down. The central bank does not have the ammunition to protect the currency, and therefore there is no alternative to a devaluation. No alternative to a collapse in the stock market. No alternative to higher inflation until hopefully the price of oil goes back up. It's not. I said the same thing on the 19th of November when I put out a price target of 200. I said the central bank does not have the firepower. Matters Nigeria and the Naira. January 21st, I recalibrated to 220, and I called Emifile's finger in the dike strategy, set to be overwhelmed by a tsunami. Um, interesting comment by Diana Layfield, Stand Chart CEO for Africa, will spend a lot of time focused on some of the very large growth opportunities. So Nigeria and Kenya probably being the two most prominent. Kenya has managed to diversify, said the Standard Chartered CEO Lamin Manjang. It's not a commodity-driven economy like Nigeria. He's a friend and an interesting and intellectual man. Um, Ghana Stock Exchange down 3.16% year-to-date. A U.S. diplomat was arrested with pro-democracy activists in the Congo. I like this photograph tweeted by the BBC World Service. They are like secretaries. We are the bosses. Fashion rivalry in Kinshasa. CIC Insurance reported full year earnings per share were retreated to 28.333%. Total assets up 39.06%. Um, uh, profit before tax down 16.8%. EPS down 28.333%. Company saying PBT declined by 17%, mainly due to increase in claims, particularly now medical business and policyholders' benefits costs. So that's an issue around actuarial competency. The group is currently undertaking a business transformation exercise. Our operations in Uganda and South Sudan have started off really well. Operations in Malawi expected to start later this year. It looks very expensive on a trading PE of 23.953. However, it's growing its footprint regionally. It's a big opportunity insurance. Somewhere down the road, it's going to look cheap again. Cement consumption grew by nearly a fifth to hit a record 5 million tons last year, driven by robust growth and property development. Consumption is expected to rise further as the government's infrastructure projects get underway. Data from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics shows that uptake of cement rose by 19%, from 4.2 million tons in 2013. Knight Frank says the real estate sector is witnessing a boom with no signs of abating. This coupled with government projects such as the Standard Gauge Railway, Lapset and Ethiopia Transport Corridor will continue pushing up demand. Um, and I tend to agree with that. The average price of tea at auction in the Mombasa port rose to $2.64 a kilogram. That's up from less than $2 a kilogram in December. Nairobi all share up 6.03% year to date. NSE 20 up 4.9% year to date. We had a blistering start at the beginning of the year. Then a bit of profit taking setting from the end of February through to today. But again, I think we're going to have another big fall in the price of oil, further accentuating the movement of monies with the tag destination date, Lagos to destination Nairobi. And therefore, I'm bullish that the market will actually be, this will be a short bit correction. Once again, thank you for stopping by.